Hello. We are at the 10th Regional Tech Forum Telecommunications and Media Companies on the threshold of uh, new business models. And I'm here with Dr. Carl Heinz Neumann, who is the General Manager and Director of WIT Consult. Hello, Dr. Neumann. And would you present yourself briefly in a few words and the organization you're working with? Yeah, I'm general manager of WIK, which is a, one of the leading European telecommunications research and consultancy organizations. We do a lot of work in the area of uh, telecommunications and electronic communications in general. We have a special focus in our work on regulatory policy issues. That means that our major clients are national regulatory authorities, governments, the European Commission, European Parliament, but also operators in the industry. In your presentation, that was just minutes ago, you mentioned the goals of the Digital Agenda Europe, the DAE. What do you think about them? Are they too ambitious and optimistic, or do you think that they could be achieved, really, but with a lot of investment? It's, it's for sure that these uh, digital agenda targets are, are quite challenging for Europe. I mean, it's good that we have formulated them and uh, be because it's obvious that Europe lags behind other major areas of the world in the most advanced broadband infrastructure network deployments. So it was good to formulate challenging targets, but we should also be realistic. In, if, you, if you look at the numbers and the current level of investments, it is questionable that uh, in all countries we, we really have the chance to achieve the, the targets. There are several countries which really have a chance to, to achieve that, but I'm sure not all of the European countries. Which ones are you more optimistic about? Yeah, it's interesting. It is not the, the uh, biggest countries uh, uh, which uh, have the best chance to achieve the digital agenda targets are uh, smaller countries like uh, Lithuania, Estonia and also Bulgaria. If I look at the high degree of um, coverage of NGA networks already, um, have, a, have a better chance to achieve the targets uh, as uh, countries like like Italy or even Germany. I mean, we have a hard job to do in Germany to achieve the targets. That's interesting to hear. And which ones do you consider the main technologies that are promising to deliver high-speed broadband to all the EU countries? Yeah, I mean, the, the best technology uh, in the world and the best of class technology is fiber technology, FTT. B, FTTH, um, but uh, it should not be forgotten that, that uh, shared access technologies like cable and to a certain degree also um, mobile with LTE and LTE advanced um, can bring about to achieve the targets at much lower costs. And in particular, if I look at cable, the role of cable is a little bit uh, underestimated. Uh, cable has a great uh, potential and cable will be a great contributor to the digital agenda targets in particular in the area of the super, uh, super fast broadband access. And um, what is Bulgaria's position regarding the FTTX coverage and take up and could you explain the difference between the two? Let me first say that there's an interesting uh, dichotomy in the uh, um, broadband area which I identified when I looked at the number in, in numbers in Bulgaria. First is that you still have a way to go to achieve the basic broadband targets where in Europe we uh, want to have achieved that every citizen has access to broadband uh, with some 2 megabit uh, speed. Here you still have a way to go. Uh, but the other side of the coin is that uh, Bulgaria belongs to the top five uh, countries in NGA deployment. So you are uh, far ahead uh, compared to many other countries in, uh, 
in the NGA deployment, in particular regarding fiber. Bulgaria has uh, close to 60% coverage of, of FDTH, which is, uh, I mentioned that, among the top five uh, countries in Europe. Yes, that was actually going to be my question, my, my, my following question about, uh, you mentioned this in your presentation as well, um, but however, the, the penetration is not that high yet, and um, do you think that this is a problem of the market, the operators, the government, and how do you think it could be addressed to be, for this coverage to be further enlarged? Penetration really is an issue, and uh, it is uh, more an issue, or should be more an issue, for policymakers and regulators in, in Bulgaria. If you look at the numbers, um, it is interesting that in, in Bulgaria you have a very high degree of, we call them non-liners, of people who have never used the internet before. Uh, it is between 40 and 50 percent of your population which fall into that category, which is a very, very high number compared to uh, many other European countries. But also when you look at, um, at uh, NGA, um, you have a quite uh, good coverage, you have good penetration figures, but the take-up rates, the number of people who actually subscribe to fiber where, where fiber is, is available still is relatively low. That is not a particular Bulgarian issue, it's a general issue in Europe. Um, but your numbers are sli even slightly lower than European uh, average in, in take-up. Um, why should that be an issue and a concern of policymakers and regulators? First of all, um, it is fine that we have the network deployed and have them available, but the economic benefits do not come from just having the networks, but from using them. That is where the real economic benefit comes from. That's one side. And the other side is that um, operators who conduct such major investment as fiber networks require have a hard job to get uh, profitability of those networks. And the key driver uh, for profitability of fiber networks is take up. So you have to have high take up rates um, if you wanna, wanna achieve profitability and keep the risk at an uh, acceptable level. And speaking about money, we're heading to the last question, which is about the uh, investment revenue ratio in Bulgaria, which is the highest in the EU. Um, can we say that the telcos here are doing their best and how do you think and regulators and the government help, help them in improving this ratio? Yeah, that was really impressing uh, for me to see uh, the high investment ratios, ratio in, in, in the terms that investment related to revenues of the industry. Um, in 2010, you had the highest level in Europe there. Actually, I don't know what the 2000, or I, I do not have access to figures uh, regarding 2011 and 12 and how the picture looks like that. But having a 25% uh, uh, investment share of revenues uh, is really significant. The European average is around 12-13%. And in my own country, Germany, it is only 10-11%. For me, it defines quite a dynamic um, uh, market development here in your country and it is very significant. Do you see any ways that the regulators and the government can help to improve this ratio? Somehow to ease the investments, make them easier, or optimize them in a way? If I assume that the investment dynamic still is uh, similar to what we saw in 2000. I don't see that, that you have a bottleneck with investment. Uh, the bottleneck is with demand. And what regulators and policy makers uh, should more focus upon is how they motivate people to actually use the infrastructure. Um, that is where the benefit comes from and that is also where the profitability comes from. Um, it is not an easy task when you ask me how to do that. I mean, it's not something what you can do with traditional regulatory measures, although I must say there is a regulatory element. Um, 
we have a good tradition in the meantime in Europe with competition. And competition, in my mind, and when we look at the uh, developments over the last 15 years, uh, competition is a major driver of, um, of uh, network usage. And uh, that is where the job of regulators is. And if there is still something to do, they should do it. I recognize that there's not too much NGA access in your country. That's not, once again, not a particular issue in Bulgaria. That's an issue in many European member states. And here regulators, I would say, still have a job. They should take care that alternative operators not only build out networks, but they also uh, take access um, by access-based products. And that helps to bring about penetration. And still we're talking about quite high and impressive figures here. So thank you for these comments, Dr. Neumann. And My pleasure. Meet you again next year.